Today, modern science proves that the whole existence is just vibration. It's not my invention, it is a scientific fact. Where there's a vibration, there has to be a sound. And somewhere way back, somebody told you, first there was a word and the word is God. A sound is a word, isn't it? A word is a sound rather. So they said that word is God because anybody who has looked at the existence closely can see that what you call as creation and what you call as a creator cannot be separated. If you separate it, creation will cease to exist. Not for a moment can this creation process go on. Because creation is not a done thing, it is an ongoing thing. Yes? Are you an ongoing thing or you a done thing? In the yogic system, we look at the human mechanism like this. There are five dimensions to it. So, the fifth dimension, it is a transitory state where physical is fading out into non-physical nature. Now to enter into this dimension is the whole process of mysticism because this non-physical nature is further classified in terms of our experience, how profoundly you involve in it. If you look at the creation, it is smack with intelligence all over the place. If we had only told people God is intelligence, we would have had a more sensible world. A parallel universe, as defined by the Cambridge Dictionary, is a world that closely resembles ours, but is also very different in so many ways. While some scientific theories support its existence, there is little evidence that can define its nature. This is why, until now, it remains a mystery. But what impact does it have to do with human life anyway? Why is it important to acknowledge the truth behind a parallel universe? Always science has believed that everything has a beginning and an end. Now physicists are talking about an endless universe. The yogic system has always been talking about an ever-expanding universe. For the first time, Top-level physicists are beginning to recognize that there is no beginning and an end, it is an endless universe. It is a popular theory going on right now among the scientific community that universe may be endless. Eighty-four is a significant number today in our lives, whether we are aware of it or not. Why eighty-four is significant is, this existence has passed through eighty-four uh, happenings. Eighty-four times it has happened, this is the eighty-fourth time. Today modern science proves that the whole existence is just vibration. It's not my invention, it is a scientific fact. Where there's a vibration, there has to be a sound, is that so? So, you are not just a vibration, you are a sound, a noise. <laughs> those who are making the sounds and those who are not, all of you are just one piece of sound. This is what modern science is telling you. And somewhere way back, somebody told you, first there was a word and the word is God. A sound is a word, isn't it? A word is a sound rather. If I speak in a language that you do not know, you would naturally think I'm making some crazy sounds. You don't know whether I'm really speaking a language or making up some. 
Nonsense, isn't it so? So they said, that word is God, because anybody who has looked at the existence closely can see that what you call as creation and what you call as a creator cannot be separated. If you separate it, creation will cease to exist. Not for a moment can this creation process go on, because creation is not a done thing, it is an ongoing thing, yes? Are you an ongoing thing or you're a done thing? I hope you're not a done thing. You're an ongoing process. Without the involvement of the source of creation, how would the creation be an ongoing process? It is constantly involved, it cannot be separated. The first thing that happened was sound. Even the scientists agree it was a big bang. A bang means a sound, right? <laughs> In India, it's very beautifully expressed. The first and only one god who existed in that part of the world was Rudra. Rudra literally means one who roars, a roarer. So why they called him Rudra is… that is the beginning of creation because it's a roar. The scientists call it a bang. Is it possible that it was not a bang, but it was a roar, a continuous roar. Maybe it was not just a bang, it was a roar. It didn't happen in one instant, it roared for a certain length of time and slowly creation began to happen. I said, by looking into my system, I'm saying, creation has roared eighty-four times and it will roar further many more times, a maxim… maximum of one hundred and twelve times it will roar. When it roars the last time, then there will be no beginning and end, it will be a perpetual creation. So, there is another dimension within you for which the birth has not happened, nor will the death happen to it. Only if you touch that dimension, you have something called as a future, otherwise you have just karma. Karma means you're repeating your past as future. When you allow your past to become the future, we look at you and say, it's her karma. When we say it's her karma, what it means is, she's allowing her past to be her future. There is no fresh possibility in her. That's what it is. When we look at someone and say, karma, we are just saying, they are allowing their past to become their future. There is no future for them really, it will repeat itself. It's like you go on a treadmill, it feels like you're going somewhere, but you're not going anywhere. That is karma. So, this dimension that you're looking at right now is in two levels. One has happened, another is happening. The last chant that you were singing just now is punarapi jananam punarapi maranam means this cycle, I want to break it somehow. Because once you get into a cycle, once you get into a circular moment, you are not going to go anywhere. If you say somebody is going in circles, what does the expression mean to you? It simply means he's not getting anywhere, isn't it? So when we say, it's his karma, that's what we're saying, he's not going to get anywhere because on the circle he thinks it's a new journey, it's a new journey because he has very short memory. Everybody is in a state of dementia. What is before his mother's womb or what is in his mother's womb also he does not remember. They are in a state of dementia, so the circle looks new, every time they go through it, it looks new. And every cell in your body carries memory. 
This much is very clear to us through genetic science and other things. You are carrying the memory of your forefathers and you're still behaving like them. This memory gives you a sense of belonging. At the same time, this memory binds you, it doesn't let you go. Without cutting your anchor, you're not going to move ahead. So why this memory is holding me back? It is that memory which has given integrity and stability to your body and the structure of who you are right now. Without that, without this memory, this body couldn't be created. Without the memory of a single-celled animal being within you, without all that information being carried through the evolutionary process and you sitting here, without that memory, this body cannot be structured and held together. So memory is not your enemy, it is just that you don't know how to hold it. Now, you want to get out of it, you want to make use of the memory, but you want to… you don't want to be used by your memory. That is spiritual sadhana. You want to have a future which is different from your pasts. Free does not mean you have to forget, but you have to become free from the memory which rules you. And the memory is not just in your mind. The universe known as endless is capable of creating life. Considering how closely the majority of our human chemical makeup resembles the abundant particles within the universe, science explains how life is possible. Now, what is it about the universe that helps us understand human life? Let's listen to this. In the yogic system, we look at the human mechanism like this. There are five dimensions to it, there are five layers to it. One is the physical body, which is referred to as the food body. The next is known as the mental body, because we ascribe intelligence to every cell in the body. The third layer is called as the energy body. Now the fourth layer is called as Vigyanamaya Kosha. What the word Vigyana means is, it is coming from two different words, Vishesh Gyan. Gyan means knowing or knowledge. Vishesh means an extraordinary way of knowing. So whatever you cannot perceive through five senses, if you perceive that, then that is called as Vishesh Gyan or extraordinary knowledge. So the fifth dimension, it is a transitory state where physical is fading out into non-physical nature. The fifth dimension is referred to as Anandamaya Kosha, which literally translates as bliss body. This does not mean there's a bubble of bliss or something inside. It is purely non-physical in nature. Because it is non-physical, we do not know how to define or describe it. Now to enter into this dimension is the whole process of mysticism because this non-physical nature is further classified in terms of our experience, how profoundly you involve in it. For example, in our experience, if you're normally a human being is breathing somewhere twelve to fifteen times per minute, breath is very directly connected to how the mental fluctuations happen. Suppose naturally, not by effort, by doing the right kind of things with your system, naturally if your breath drops below eleven, then you begin to understand various reverberations that are happening around you in terms of uh, all the subsonic sounds in which the animals are communicating becomes very obvious to you. If your breath drops below nine, naturally, without controlling it, then what the plants are exuding, the plant life, what it is doing, becomes very obvious to you. If your breath drops below six, then what the inanimate things, how they're reverberating, this is known as Rithambara Pragna, that means the reverberations of every form and the sounds attached to it become very clear to you, or in other words, the nature of the universe can be grasped. If you know the language of the inanimate, every form, how it is made, what is… what is its nature, what… what it is right now and what it will evolve into or what it was yesterday and what it is evolved into, all this is becoming apparent to you. Breath is a survival process, if you sit still, it goes down. The more still your body becomes, the less you breathe. If you bring your whole system to a certain level of stillness, not being in a hyperventilated state, then 
your perception goes on increasing. Now, always that which is absolutely still is referred to be as the ultimate intelligence. Everything else in its anxiety to be active, it is sacrificing its intelligence at a certain level to be in a state of action. But that which is absolutely still is considered the highest intelligence. It is only in Eastern mysticism, the source of creation is been always celebrated as the highest intelligence. If you look at the creation, it is smack with intelligence all over the place. If we had only told people God is intelligence, we would have had a more sensible world. That's what I'm thinking and that's what I'm trying to <laughs> bring it into people's experience that the source of creation is the intelligence. If you recognize that, you will try to emulate that. The world that we live in is complex and full of mystery, but we don't have to understand it all. As long as we reflect on the things that come our way each day, we can slowly unlock the secrets that the universe is trying to communicate. Learn more from the wisdom of Satguru by clicking on the video displayed on the screen. Let us know which idea strikes you the most by leaving us a comment. And don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more meaningful videos like this. Thanks for watching.